the Joe Rogan experience. But I mean, again, how does how do these systems really work? Um, you know, the, so this is my kind of conspiracy detection kit. You know, the grander the conspiracy theory, the less likely it is to be true. Like, say, Volkswagen cheating the emission standards in uh, mm. Europe. That you know, that's a very specific conspiracy theory. Turned out to be true. They really did do that, and for obvious reasons, profit motive, right? But 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 so if you scale up from that, well, they're trying to control the entire European um, uh, economy or something like. Well, no, that's too big. Well, that's they're just, just trying to make money. They're just trying to make money, right? So, um, you know, the the more people that have to be involved, the more elements that have to come. People right. are incompetent. People can't keep their mouth shut. For the most part. For the most part, yes. Now, yeah. to be fair to to the other side, um, you know, if you read about the development of the U-2 spy plane and the AR-71 Blackbird, you know, this was done in Burbank, mm-hmm. you know, where you, yeah, near sure. where you used to live. And that's right in the heart of L.A. How did they yep. do this for all those years and nobody knew about it, right? Well, they were acting on the the interests of the, the government. They were trying to be patriots. They kept their mouth shut because right. they were trying to win a war against the, the evil others. Right. So, um, again, like with the recent UAP sightings, what I want, my initial response is the SR-71 Blackbird was, before it was declassified, they were commercial pilots going, oh, my God, there's something right. going 3,000 miles an hour, 50,000 feet above me at 30,000 feet. This is impossible. We don't have anything like that. Well, actually, we did have something like that. Yeah, so, so I suspect that that's the, what you think the some UAPs of these UAP, are? I think in, in a decade or two, we're going to find out, oh, we had these incredible drones yeah. that could fly at these speeds. And- I, I tend to lean towards that as well sometimes. I go back and forth with it. I had uh, Ryan Graves on yeah, recently. I saw that. It was a fascinating conversation because the way he was describing things with no visible means of propulsion, um, no technology that we currently know is available could act in the way those things were acting. I wonder if that is what it is, if they have some sort of very advanced drones. And the fact that they seem to be transmedium, they seem to be able to enter into the ocean and then leave the ocean, I wonder. I wonder if that's something that we have, because these things, they're... You know, one of the ones that he described is like a translucent circle with a black sphere inside of yes, it. Right. And that when they updated their radar systems in 2014, they started seeing them all over the place on their systems. And that these people spotted them visually and that they were behaving in a way like at, you know, 130 mile an hour winds or completely stationary. I wonder if those are super advanced drones. Yeah, a lot of uh, another problem with these videos is that they're very grainy, uh, blurry. You can't quite make out what's going on. Like the one that it looks like it goes in the ocean comes back out. It's not clear that it goes in the ocean because the, the 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 horizon in the ocean mm-hmm. is is so blurry, right? So I'm a member of this uh, Galileo project at Harvard, uh, run by Avi Loeb, the head of the astronomy department. I had there. Avi on. Yep, yeah, I know. Yeah. And uh, you know, we're we're he, he's raising money to put cameras, high resolution cameras all over the world, right. particularly in the places where people like Graves say these. I mean, when Graves told you, I, we saw these things every day, it's like mm-hmm. every day, Yeah, there, there surely must be high-resolution photos but of those, these things. But those jets are not designed to take high-resolution video. They're designed to fight against enemy jets. Right, right. That's what they're designed for. They're designed to recognize these enemy combatants and engage with them in the most effective way possible. That's not with high-resolution digital video. Right. Well, that would be the um, that would be the solution. We just need better data. <laughs> right? Well, I wonder if they want better data. Now, let's assume. They, well, we do. The government. But the, listen, the, the government, federal government. Yeah, imagine yeah. they are running top secret programs using advanced drones and a technology that we're not currently aware of. Right. And that the United States government has these. They wouldn't want people taking videos of these things. Why would they? Right, but everyone has one of these in their pocket. I mean, yeah, but you why can't don't we get have... digital video of something that's seven miles away well, moving right, at right, you know right, right. the speed of sound. Well, You're not going to get digital video. That's of that. what we want to do with the Galileo project. Is and get according those cameras to up there. Christopher Mellon, a guy who you know did work yeah. for the Defense Department, he said there are top secret videos and photographs that he's seen or that he's aware of. Yeah. That are pretty spectacular that That's, they I've, don't I've, understand. Right, I've heard him say that. It's like, okay, then let's see them. Well, we yeah, can't. but why right. would they but, release right. that? This yeah. is this is the question: is like if they, just like the Blackbird, just like the stealth bomber, many of the other projects that they have that were top secret before they became public. Why would they release all right. that information? Probably if it's, wouldn't. Right. Yeah. Right. 
I wonder what that stuff is. And the fact that it happens so often in that very specific area, you know, I, who knows? Another thing I was thinking about with the UAPs is in the history of technology, no nation gets very far ahead of any other nation. Right. Um, they either back engineer it or copy it or steal the secrets and so on. It's not likely we would have anything that the Russians and Chinese wouldn't be pretty close to having also. You know, just think of just the development of jets. Or the uh, development of the nuclear bomb. The nuclear bomb. I mean, the Russians had, you know, so 1945 was Hiroshima, and 1949, the Russians, uh, right. they stole our secrets, right? So this idea that, you know, these are super advanced uh, uh, drones that we have and the Russians and Chinese don't have, it's not likely they would not know the technology that we know, the physics, the aer aerodynamics, and, and, and the engineering and all that, because they they read the same journals. They do the same research we do. So what do you think it is? Well, I well I think it's probably multiple things. I think some of them might be drones that just really high-tech um, high tech drones. Some of them are just blurry videos that are – I think the one of the sphere inside the cube or cube the cube inside the sphere, the sphere is yeah. probably a balloon. A balloon? I, yes. A balloon that stands stationary well, at 130 mile an hour winds? Appears to st stand stationary. Appears with yeah. the most sophisticated yeah. tracking devices I that know, these I military Again, jets have. I know. These are anomalies. Yeah. So we just need better but data. But why would you think it's a balloon? Well, what else would it be? Okay, it might be, uh, uh, you know, it might be a drone. It, certainly probably not an alien spacecraft and so on. Certainly but, probably but, not. Why do you say that? Uh, well, because well, this is kind of gets into the argument of the SETI program. Yeah. There's so many, there's so much empty space out there. The chances of them finding us are pretty slim. I, so I really? separate. I say I separate. But we two find questions. planets all the time. Y yeah, but we are telescopes, not, not right. Visiting. Telescopes and satellites right. and all sorts of you know things that we send into space. But we find planets all the time that are in the Goldilocks zone. Uh, and we have a very relatively unsophisticated in terms of like what we'd expect from something that's capable of intergalactic travel. Rel relatively simple technology in comparison to what we would think. If you took what we have today and you in increased our capabilities, you know, a thousand years from now, uh, you could imagine that yes. it would be quite easy for someone to at least send a drone from another planet to visit Earth and observe. This is the Fermi paradox yes. yeah, that you know of. And uh, where are they? Well, of course, most scientists like him d don't think that they're here. So I separate two most questions. Scientists? Most scientists? Michio yeah. Kaku thinks they're here. Uh, he's been a little fuzzy about that. He's not totally committed to that. He, he's he, totally he, committed. He was here. So? He was here, and he talked about it on the podcast. He said for the longest time he was a skeptic. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, he has kind of come down on that side a little but bit. But why would you be firm on that? When you think about the fact that there's hundreds of billions okay, of galaxies hang on, hang on. in the known universe. Yes, yes, yes. Let's separate two questions. Are okay. they are they out there? Have they come here? Are they out there? Almost certainly. Right. I would say, you know, 99.9% .9 they're out there. You know, I would agree with you. 100 billion stars in our galaxy, 100 billion sure. to a trillion galaxies. Just do the numbers. Yeah. No matter how improbable it is you get from bacteria to big brains and, and, and civilization, it's going to happen. Right. But, but. Ha have they come here? <laughs> okay, so it, how good is the evidence for that? Not very. It's pretty thin, right? How it's, good? It's how anecdotal. Much? It's human. It's human eyewitnesses. It's blurry videos, grainy photos. Uh, if they were here, damn it. Where's the, you know, pick up the, the, the widget on the dashboard and bring it back here. But just looking at what we know that these fighter pilots have witnessed, the data that they've acquired, when they're w looking at something like Commander David Fravor, who, when they were off the coast of the, with the, the Nimitz, when they mm -hmm. tracked that thing that went from above 60,000 feet above sea level to 50 feet above sea level in less than a second, mm -hmm. what's that? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, what is that nobody, thing that they have visual? They have visual contact by multiple sources, and they tracked it, and they have video of this thing moving off at insane rates of speed. Mm -hmm. What's that? Yeah, I don't know. This is the problem with anomalies. No but theory if, if explains there, everything, right? But if there was any evidence that pointed to something that operated in a way that we can't comprehend any of the known technologies being able to reproduce. That's a, that's one of them. But no technologies come out of a vacuum like that. They always build on previous technologies. Right, but if you're talking about something from another planet well, okay. or something from another, <laughs> right. another civilization that we're not aware of that's on Earth, maybe that lives in the water, we don't know. We don't know. And w when you're seeing these things, when you're talking about people that are 
the the best fighter pilots that we have available that are operating with the most sophisticated fighter jets with tracking systems that are you know c constantly being updated and then when they update them they start picking up these things like Ryan Graves discussed on the podcast mm -hmm. why would you think that those are not possibly something from somewhere else it depends on how you want to like oppose the the problem so here's how I think about it so I take Leslie Keen's um, a book on UFOs and you know pilots and generals go on the record and so on in that book she says 90 to 95 percent of all sightings have perfectly normal explanations I would probably yeah. agree that's true so the question is what do we do with that other five percent of right. anomalies okay you can, no theory explains everything there's always going to be anomalies in every scientific theory what do you have to, what do you do with it nothing you assign it to a graduate student to figure it out or you know that's future research or, you know it, rather than going to you know a grand theory of visitation by aliens or the Russians or Chinese have these super advanced technologies that we don't have or we have them and they don't have. I mean, again, if the, if we had this technology, surely the Russians have something pretty close to that. There's nothing in uh, from the videos in Ukraine of any Russian drones that act anything like these UAPs. Surely they would use this technology if they had it. Well, we're assuming that those UAPs are military in nature and not something that they use to observe things. Yeah, could be. I mean, why would we assume that these things, if they're capable of behaving in this way and they're just some sort of a device that can travel at insane rates of speed, why would we assume that those things can launch missiles or act in a military capacity? Right. I mean, you know there are UAP sightings over Ukraine. Yeah, but, the, okay, so Avi did a nice paper on that showing that these were um, uh, artillery shells and not what... They, the, the other people said they thought that thought it was that it was like a drone or a plane or something weird like that. He showed that if if it was what they thought it was, it would have had a much bigger impact going through the atmosphere at that speed and burning up. But it didn't. So these are artillery shells. Anyway, he did a I'm nice like, paper on that. Interesting. Yeah. So, but what about these things that supposedly move far faster than the speed of sound without the sonic boom? Yeah, how is that possible? How is that possible? <laughs> that's right. It's not. That's that's so where it gets weird. That's where it gets weird, right? But so is that's where is it the really question moving? Is, is it hours? Is it really moving at that speed, or is it a misperception of the video, a miscalculation? People make scientists make miscalculations of these sorts of things all the time. Yeah, that was one of the things that was posed to David Fravor, and he said they have multiple sources yeah. of of data. There, it's not just like one system that's monitoring these things. It's multiple systems. Yeah. And I follow these guys. I agree. They are incredibly credible, right? And they have good arguments. What do you do with the anomalies? I think and, you're and, an anti-conspiracy <laughs> theorist. That's what I think. No, I'm a skeptic, Joe. I'm, <laughs> I know I, you are. I'm, I'm just a You literally are I'm the, the editor. Or what are you, what's your position in Skeptic Magazine? You're, I'm the editor-in-chief yes, publisher of Skeptic yeah. Magazine. There yeah, you're is. literally a skeptic. Yeah, that is my day job. Yeah. But it, it isn't that I don't believe things. Uh, I mean, I believe the theory of evolution. I think the Big Bang Theory happened when people like uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson and, and my, my quantum physics friends tell me quantum physics is true. This is how we know it. To me, it's weird, spooky. I don't really understand it, but okay. You know, there, we have tons of evidence.